you wrote a, an op-ed in the Washington uh, Post with your Brookings colleague Jeremy Shapiro that caused quite a storm, I think, in Washington and in Kiev because while putting all the blame or most of the blame on Vladimir Putin, you essentially endorsed his vision of how this crisis could be solved. Have you already been accused of being a Kremlin sympathizer? <laughs> well, you're right to uh, say that, yes, it's been controversial. And there are some people who think we're letting Putin off the hook too easily with this proposal. Uh, but I simply would say uh, this proposal would require uh, Mr. Putin to acknowledge and undo much of his activity in eastern Ukraine, uh, not necessarily in Crimea. We, we would propose a referendum there under international supervision. I realize that Crimea might vote to stay part of Russia even after that. Um, but Russia has to verifiably leave eastern Ukraine with its military activity. And, um, and that's a pretty big change. And then Russia has to agree to uphold the future territorial sovereignty uh, of all countries along its borders, including Ukraine. And in return, we would agree that we're not going to add new members to NATO among the former Soviet republics, mm -hmm. especially Ukraine. And we would, we would essentially agree to guarantee the sovereignty of Ukraine together going forward. And I think that's actually a viable proposition. Then, of course, as this is implemented, the sanctions on Russia would be lifted, which then gets us back to a partnership, which is what both sides need. Uh, economically and also strategically, we need to be partners around the world and not uh, adversaries.